Oh, you're here. I was just about to hang up a new art piece. See? Yeah, actually, I just thrifted it this morning. I need some more stuff to add to this wall. Nice. Pretty much everything here is from the thrift store, and yeah, I know, it's so cute, right? Let me show you. You actually can make a Hoa housewife. You just gotta take her to the thrift store. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Olivia Renald, and this is my thrifted vintage kitchen. I guess we might as well start with the rest of the wall. There's this tea towel that I got from eBay. It has some recipes on it. They all sound pretty disgusting to me, honestly. But I mostly put it here for the color scheme and like it has food on it. It's a kitchen, you know, just makes sense. But right next to it is something I'm a little more excited about. It's like a letter holder. I usually do keep stuff in there. I just moved it for the video to look clean. I bought this in an antique store a long time ago, like before I moved out of my parents' house. And then like a year after I bought it, I watched Mad Men. Guess what was hanging up in the kitchen of one of my favorite characters from all of fiction, Betty Draper. This exact letter holder, I could not believe it. So I mean, I already loved it, but that makes it so much more special and I'll never get rid of it. Um, what else is up here? That's basically it. There's this little embroidered sunflower thing. It's so high up. Thrifted that a few weeks ago. And there's my little shelf. I'm really proud of how I curated this, actually. The top one is a little mismatched and from the dollar store, so we'll ignore that. But this is like the tea making section. Let me make some real quick. Usually the tea bags are in a canister like that too, but I smashed it, so they're in the box. It's still pretty. Yeah, the dishes are vintage too. I'll tell you about those in a minute. Cookie. But on the second level is where it gets a little more relevant. This is like some vintage looking packaging from some sort of candies. I found it in a thrift store. I just thought it was pretty and it matches the colors. Behind that, I have my Spice of Life canister that holds my kidney beans. It's my dream to replace all these silver ones from the dollar store with more Spice of Life canisters, but they go for a lot of money online and I haven't been lucky enough to thrift anymore yet. This was the first Spice of Life piece I ever found. I'll show you the rest of my small collection in a second. I also have these three Russian dolls here. I'm really disappointed in them actually. I was expecting more than three. Like I thought there'd be a really tiny one at the end and I was gonna put them on my bookshelf, but it was only three and I didn't know until I got home because in the store, the price sticker was like holding it shut. It was only a dollar, but I don't know. They kind of worked right here. So this is where they live. And then I have these measuring spoons antiques from Europe. Just kidding. They're actually from anthropology. Underneath that, on the third level, is my orange poppy stoneware. This stuff is from the 70s, made in Japan. This is dusty as fuck, and I should have noticed that before I started filming, but we're just gonna go with it. This one is a French onion soup bowl. This one is a teapot, and this teapot is what started it all. This was 
the first like vintage cookware piece I ever collected last summer. It was what really got me interested in all this. I just bought it because it looks pretty on the shelf and I ended up googling it and found out that it was like a collector's thing and it really got me started on this whole world of vintage kitchen stuff that I knew nothing about and now I'm really excited about it. So that just goes to show you actually can make a hoa housewife. You just gotta take her to the thrift store. Anyway, there's one more piece to this collection and it's here on the stove. I usually only keep one decorative pot out at a time, but these two are both new and I just couldn't decide. This enamel pot has the same orange poppy design. I'm not sure if it's the same company that makes it or if it's just like inspired, but I just think it's so pretty. I was so excited when I found this. It sits right here just as decoration. It's not always this one. I have four that I switch out. This is my Pyrex Spice of Life casserole dish. Matches with the beans container. And I actually found it in the same thrift store in the same spot like three months later. This collection was made in either the 70s or the 80s. I can never remember. They're both decades I was not at all alive for. So they kind of blend together in my head to be honest. This one is also Pyrex Corningware. This was the first pattern they ever produced of these dishes, blue corn flour. And it was a big deal at the time because they could go in the oven and on the stove and they're pretty enough to serve food on. Revolutionary as fuck. This one is really special to me because it was from my great grandmother's collection. Um, it was given to me so I could sell it, but I decided I'd rather keep it because like number one, I don't have anything else of hers. And number two, it's like this is literally from her kitchen that she used and she was a real life vintage housewife, you know? I can't get rid of that. I haven't ever actually cooked anything in either of these casserole dishes. It's like hard for me to believe that something that nice looking can actually go in the oven. So like no matter how many times I read that it can, I'm still not completely convinced, but one day. Last, this is my newest one. It's another enamel pot. This one is made for fondue, I think. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but the enamel pots, I only use these ones for decoration. I wouldn't cook with them because they could contain lead. Some of them can be safe depending on what year it was produced, but like if you don't know for sure, it's better to be safe. So this one kind of has the spice of life pattern, but it's made by a different company, Levco. I haven't done much research into it, but I assume it was made around the same time as the Pyrex because it was a popular design and they wanted to get in on that money. My favorite thing about this one is the wooden handles. So yeah, I keep a decorative pot on the stove just because I'm cute like that. And there's a couple more vintage things here too. Like I have this gravy separator. I use it as a spoon rest for when I'm cooking. And I keep my spaghetti in this container that I thrifted before I even knew what vintage was. I've had this since my first apartment. It's not in focus. I keep my boxes of spaghetti in there. There's someone's pasta recipe taped in the top. I never took it out. I think I read that it's from the 80s. Again, I can't remember. Then over here, this stuff is obviously modern. Takes up all the counter space I have. Um, but my butter dish, I did get from the thrift store. Same with this little thing that I use for pouring, you know? It's kind of pretty, it was really cheap. There's those up here, and then my dishes. These are also from the 70s, 80s. I didn't thrift these. My grandpa works in the hotel industry and this was a set they used in the restaurant of one of their hotels that closed. Um, I think it was like near Quebec City. I have like vague memories of going there as a kid. But when they closed, I guess they were getting rid of stuff. So my grandma saved this set for me. That all happened like when I was a teenager and my grandma was saving them for me all this time. But she only remembered to give them to me like a couple months ago. So I've been using them since then. I really like the scalloped edge. Food just looks really nice on them. If you were my guest for real, I'd serve you something on these and I bet you'd be so impressed. Oh fuck. Yeah. And then my glasses are up here. 
They're all mismatched and from the thrift store because when I first moved in this apartment, I had some like Walmart glasses that were like a dollar each and they were such bad quality that when I was washing them, they broke and like cut my hands, all four of them. So I've been replacing them with just like random pretty souvenir ones I've been finding at the thrift store. Each of these was like one to two dollars. This Jamaica one is my favorite. Drinks taste best in it. Okay, is that it? Yeah. And then lastly, my only vintage appliance is this crock pot. The price tag is still in there, not because I haven't washed it, but because it's like under tape and it's just like hard to pick it off, so I haven't. But I thrifted this pretty recently for $8. I like the little sunflowers on it and I like the size. It's just me here when I cook, so I don't really need a big one anymore. So it works. I think that's 80s, but I say that about everything, you really can't trust me. Okay, I guess it's time to end the video. So thanks for coming on this tour of my kitchen. I really hope you like it. I try my best to make it look cute, but I don't have much space to work with. It makes me happy to cook in here with all these pretty things. So I hope you feel, I don't know, inspired to start your own collection or something like that. I don't know. I just hope you like the video. If anyone watches this, maybe I'll do like other rooms in my house because I go thrifting a lot. So there is much more I could show. <laughs> but that was my tiny kitchen bye i'll see you in the next video